Hi, scholars and families. Welcome to my third video. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Today, we're going to go ahead and get started with our remote learning for Wednesday, April 1st. Wow, it's April Fool's Day. I thought about making a little April Fool's joke and telling you you didn't have any work, but I thought that would be too mean. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started with our Wednesday work for today. Um, if you have this printed, amazing job. Keep working on it with the printed copy. You can follow right along and fill in the blanks. If you don't have it printed, that's okay. I'm going to be showing you how you can use just a blank sheet of notebook paper or printer paper to also make this lesson work for you. So what we're going to be thinking about today is the structure of informative paragraphs. Remember, um, when we write a paragraph, you might remember from the Cinderella unit, we like to introduce what we're talking about, we give some details, and then we conclude our paragraph. We're gonna get more into that later. But for now, let's think about fables. Even though fables are imaginary stories, you have learned new information about animals from them. Remember, information, that's details about something. So let's give a quick test. What information have you already learned about how tortoises move? Take a minute to think. Yeah, turtles move in a special way. They move slowly. Take a look at that word slowly. Can you pretend you're a tortoise and just move slowly towards the screen? Nice job. Reading stories is one way to get information about a topic. A topic is what the story or the text is all about. Writing that includes lots of information about something is called informative writing. It's sort of like when you read a nonfiction book about something and it gives you information about that thing. It teaches us something about a topic. We're gonna clap out the syllables for informative writing. My turn first. I'm gonna say informative writing. Wow, there's so many of those. Let's try it again together. Informative writing. You try it on your own. I'll clap with you. Let's try that again on two. One, two. Good job. That is called informative writing. You're going to learn more about how that works so you can write your own informative paragraphs. When you write informative paragraphs, you are writing to show what you know about a topic. A topic is what the story is about. In informative writing, authors provide or give the readers information. We're going to read an example of an informative paragraph about grasshoppers. Listen for new information about grasshoppers. So right now, I'm going to show you the informative paragraph about grasshoppers. You can pause the video here and read it on your own after I read it one time. Let's try. Grasshoppers, whoop, pause. Is your finger touching the word grasshoppers on your printed packet? Or if you don't have a printed packet, take your finger and put it really close to the screen on your tablet or phone or computer. Start with grasshoppers. Finger on grasshoppers. Get ready. Grasshoppers have special legs. Their back legs are long and strong. They use their legs for jumping. Some grasshoppers rub their back legs and wings together to sing. Grasshoppers' legs are special. Pause the video here and reread it again to yourself or to the adult that's in the room with you. Welcome back. Great job reading the informational paragraph about grasshoppers. Let's move on and talk about what we learned from this paragraph. What did we learn from the paragraph about grasshoppers? You're gonna pause the video again and write these sentences down on your own paper if you don't have the packet printed. If you do have the packet printed, just fill in the blanks. Pause the video here, write down these sentences, and fill in the blanks. 
I'm going to zoom out so you can see both these sentences and the informational paragraph. Excellent job. Nice job filling in these sentences. Grasshoppers have mm back legs. What word fills in that blank? That's right. They have long and strong back legs. Very nice. Grasshoppers use their legs to pause. How did I even get the first part of the information? I need to go back inside of the text to find my information. First of all, let's find long and strong. But wait, how did I know to use long and strong and not special or jumping? Here's where an important detail come in, comes in. We are looking for the grasshopper's back legs. So we would find here where it talks about the grasshopper's back legs. Their back legs are long and strong. So I'm going to fill in long and strong in this first blank. Let's try it one more time. Grasshoppers use their legs to Mm. What do they use their legs to do? Let's look for the word use in our paragraph. They use, ooh, alert, alert. They use their legs for what? That's correct. They use their legs for jumping. So I'm going to fill in jumping here. Wait a second, does this make sense? Grasshoppers use their legs to jumping? No, I would have to change that to fit the new sentence. Grasshoppers use their legs to, hmm. What should I take off of this word to make it fit in our sentence? That's correct, let's take off the ing part of the word. Grasshoppers use their legs to jump. Very nice. If you also filled in to sing, that's okay too because they do use their legs to sing. Last one, a grasshopper sings by, now we have to fill in details about how a grasshopper sings. Let's look back in our text to find the information. So I'm looking for the word sings. Some grasshoppers rub their back legs and wings together to sing. <gasps> there it is. But how do they sing? Right. They rub their back legs and wings together. So a grasshopper sings by rubbing their back legs and wings together. Take a moment, pause this video here to make sure that you have these answers on your own paper. Very nice job. Welcome back. Remember, when authors write informative text, they write to teach the reader information about a topic. There is a structure that we follow every time we write an informative paragraph. This makes sure that the information is given in the right order so that it makes sense to our reader. Here is a quick little picture about how you can remember a topic statement, information, and conclusion as the parts of your informative paragraph. You can think about an informative paragraph like a sandwich. It has a topic statement, which is this top slice of bread. And the middle of the sandwich is the good stuff. The middle is called information. The middle is called? Very nice job repeating after me. The conclusion of the paragraph is the bottom of the slice of bread. The topic statement and conclusion state the topic. 
which holds all of the good stuff together. Silent connection to the video if you remember the Oreo opinion paragraphs. We used to think of opinion paragraphs like an Oreo in class with the piece of chocolate on the top and the white filling in the middle and then our conclusion piece of chocolate on the bottom. Now we're moving on to talk about a hamburger with your topic statement at the top, your facts and details as the juicy parts in the middle, and the other bun at the bottom that is your conclusion. The difference between the Oreo and the hamburger is the type of paragraph we're writing. For an Oreo, we were writing an opinion. Oreo, O, opinion, O. For the hamburger, we are writing informative paragraphs. We're gonna keep using this hamburger metaphor for the rest of class so you can think about how to structure your own paragraphs. Now you're going to try. You're gonna pause the video and annotate or label each part of the paragraph. If you are writing on your own printed packet, go ahead and annotate on this paragraph itself. If you are working on a blank sheet of paper, why don't you go ahead and pause the video here and point to each part of the paragraph and think about which part belongs with which part of the hamburger informational paragraph. I'll meet you back here when you're done. Welcome back. You should have found that this, grasshoppers have special legs, is the introduction. This is the first bun of the paragraph. You should have found that this last part is the conclusion. It tells us the topic of the paragraph just like the informational first part of the paragraph does too. What our topic is, is that grasshoppers have special legs. You see special legs here and you see legs are special here. That topic comes up two times. All of this juicy stuff in the middle, that's gonna be your information and details. This is like your lettuce and your burger and your cheese and your ketchup and whatever else you wanna add to your burger. Now we're gonna practice writing down the parts of an informative paragraph. Pause the video here and write these sentences down on your own paper. Fill in the blanks on your printed packet or write these sentences down on your own and fill in the blanks. But this time, we're not gonna talk about the answers to these questions because if you wanna know the answers, just rewind in the video a little bit. I'll meet you back here when you're done. Great job. Now we're gonna move on to Wednesday grammar. Wednesday grammar is all about vocabulary. Silent connection, if you remember filling out the different ways that you could move in your packet yesterday. Nice. We have to put these words in order from slowest moving to fastest moving. Which word do you think out of these words is the slowest? Is it flit, racing, hurrying, scurrying, or swerving? The first word that you would put is the slowest word. Which one do you think is the slowest? If you said that flit, was the slowest, I think I might agree. So I would take flit and I would write it in the first box. Which word do you think is the next slowest? Racing, hurrying, scurrying, or swerving? If you need some help thinking about this, you could try to act out each of these movements and write down the movements that you think belong in the correct order. I'm gonna tell you a secret. Some of these words don't have to go in the exact right box that I might put them in. You might have a different idea about how fast each of these words mean. 
if I was filling out this chart, I would probably put swerving next and then maybe scurrying. And then I'd have to decide between hurrying and racing for my last two. Yours might look a little bit different. Go ahead and finish this on your own. And after that, you are done with this work for today. I'm gonna to take just a moment for those of you who are working off of a blank sheet of paper to show you what this might look like on your own piece of paper. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna share my screen to look like a blank piece of paper. So after you've written your sentences here at the top, so here are your sentences from earlier, sentences from earlier, sentences from earlier, you might now need to think about how you want to write each of those vocabulary words. Hmm, let's make this a little bit thicker. I'm gonna make five different boxes. One, two, three, four, five. In each of these boxes, I would take my pencil and write in the words from the slowest moving to the fastest moving. Excellent job so far in your packet. I can't wait to see what words you create in your own word sorting graph. Have a good rest of your day. I'll meet you back here for your next video.